Greetings fellow YouTubers, it's Tuskegee87 here to give you a bike review on the 650R, a GT 650R, 2007 model made by the one and only Hyusung. Now I know you're all thinking Hyusung, that's a piece of crap. Everybody likes to talk crap about Hyusung, whatever, I always say thousand tribal books aren't worth one real trip what I mean by that is don't judge a book by its cover what I mean by that is you never know till you go what I mean by that is everybody has their own opinions so they're like assholes everybody has one and they all stink only one that doesn't stink is your own opinion that you keep to yourself so I'm gonna give you my review on this bike and how I feel. Uh, give you background. I ride a 01 R6. Both of these bikes are carbureted, so I'm used to working with these and how they operate and their acceleration, all their performance parameters. Uh, this is a 90 degree V twin 650 engine, putting out about 72 horsepower, a little bit less than uh, you know Suzuki's SV650. They kind of uh, well. This 650 kind of takes, tries to take after the SV. Now, don't get it wrong; they're not great comparisons, you know. Then, you know, by a long shot. I mean, this is a Korean bike manufacturer, but come on, keep in mind these are the same people who make Samsungs and who make um, some other kind of phone. But everybody has. But anyway, back to the bike itself. Try to go through this quick. Uh, reason why I'm doing a review on this bike, a lot of people like talk crap about it, a lot of people like to say negative things about how you sung. I'm here to give you a non-biased review on it. I'm here to give you ups and downs, things that you might want to consider if you're looking at buying a higher sung. It says 2007 carbureted higher sung. Get right into it. Uh, first thing I want to talk about is braking. For new beginners, I think the braking system is pretty good. reason why I say that, uh, beginning riders aren't used to using their hands when they brake. So, how your sons decide to compensate for that. Normally, you like to squeeze hard uh, when you're riding for the first time or if you get in a clutch situation. Normally, people tend to clench, squeeze the, clutch, uh, squeeze the brakes. You squeeze the brakes hard on here, like on most sport, super sport bikes and leader bikes. If you squeeze the brake pretty hard, it's going to you know, flip you head over heels. On this bike, if you squeeze it hard, it's just going to continue to slowly, gradu gradually slow you down. It's not going to throw you over. It's not going to prepare most of your weight to the front of the bike. It's just simply going to stop you. Now, granted, stopping power isn't that great, and it takes a while to stop, but look at it this way. You have a rear brake. On most bikes, sports bikes and bikes in general, your front brake does about 90% of the braking. Rear brake is about you know 10% here on this particular bike in this setup uh, the numbers are kind of skewed the percentage is kind of skewed I don't know the exact percentage but I would say front brake is about 60 rear brake 40 whatever I don't know rear brake works that's all I have to say about that if you use the front brake and rear brake you will definitely notice a stopping difference the rear brake actually works and it doesn't lock up the back tire trust me I've tried it multiple times another point I like to add on this is acceleration uh, like I said, this is a 650, but it's a V-twin. So, essentially, with that being said, uh, you're not going to have a lot of acceleration. On this particular bike, or excuse me, you're not going to have a lot of, you know, super sport acceleration. Uh, this one in first gear accelerates like a 250, so it's not that scary. It's not going to scare a new rider. But yet, once you pop in second gear, you start to feel that power. You start to feel the engine kicking it up gear. Now, like I said, it's not like riding a Suzuki 650 or whatnot. But like I said, first time beginner, riding something cheap, something you don't care about dropping. It's a perfect bike. So, uh... Like I said, first gear, not that much power, not that much acceleration. Dropping in second gear, you start to feel it. I mean, it does have some giddy up, despite what people say. Most people say it sucks because they haven't ridden one. Most people say it sucks because they've ridden one and it was a crappy one or they didn't get a chance to actually fully experience the bike itself. Anyway, back to the non-biased part. Um, seating is comfortable. The seating on here is a little bit lower than on the Suzuki SV650, so shorter riders are able to ride this a little bit better. Like I said, it's still not great, but for my wife, you know, she's about five, six, whatnot, it's a perfect bike for her. So this is actually her bike. So she rides it, she likes it. I mean, that's all that really matters that the rider likes it. Um, one thing that I do like about this bike 
that my bike doesn't have, most newer bikes have this, is the LED digital display. And one thing that I like the most about it is it has a fuel gauge. My bike doesn't have that, so I'm slightly envious, but whatever. Has a fuel gauge. Great thing for uh, beginning riders. Had a friend say that her bike just cut off on her for no apparent reason. She didn't know why. Found out later on, she forgot to fill it up. Apparently, you have to fill these things up every now and then. But, uh, like I said, that's why this fuel gauge is here. That's why I like it. That way, when my wife is riding, she can see, oh, crap, I'm low on fuel. I need to stop and get some. Uh, I mean, standard display gives you miles per hour. You can adjust the brightness of the LED display just by the press of a selector button so you can adjust it up and down which is something that I haven't seen on a bike you know before is being able to adjust the dimness uh, one thing I will say the tachometer needle doesn't light up but the wrist behind it does so I'd be mindful about that right at night but other than that I mean that's pretty good uh, come around here to the front. You got your, I like to say, Hayabusa style lighting where your regular beams are on the bottom, your high beam is on the top. You know, it's cool looking, cool look design. Uh, to me, generally, I like the overall look of the bike, like the overall feel of the bike. And me being an R6 rider, you know, I still have fun on this bike. One thing I will say about this bike that's a little bit different on mine is uh, when you're cornering, going around turns, this bike enters the turn so much better. feels so much lighter. I mean, it is a 650, so obviously it's going to feel lighter, but it feels so much better when you're doing it. Essentially, you have to get on one to ride and figure out yourself. Now... I'm not, you know, riding high or songs, you know, ass or whatnot. I'm riding a bike. So I'm just giving you what my review is on it. Uh, the bike isn't too loud. So that's a good thing if you're one of those type of people who don't want to make a lot of noise. But it's just enough for people to hear you. Uh, but other than that, that's all I really have on this bike. I just wanted to get my review out there. There's a lot of people who have their reviews out there. A lot of people talk crap about it. Like I say, a lot of people talk highly favorable about it. And me, I'm just kind of talking on, you know, middle ground. Like I said, overall.